Hey, what's going on YouTube, Alabama Reloader here. So, come to you today to give a little bit of an update on this guy. This is the CVA Cascade chambered in 308. Uh, right now, this is not the configuration that I will uh, take it hunting in, but I just have a SWFA fixed 10 power uh, by 42 millimeter scope on top. This is the SWFA SS. 10 by 42 so this is just that very basic model uh, that you can pick up on their website generally it's 300 bucks thing is 299 uh, they were running a sale when i got this one it was like 220 dollars. so pretty cool a lot cheaper at least than 300 dollars. so really good for uh real quick on that it's really good um for doing this type of work where hey i want to work up a load throw a really good scope on there, really clear glass, a great reticle. This is the MOA version and it has a floating center dot. I know the mill version, if you get the mill quad reticle, I've had that one as well. And the one, the copy I had at least, it just had crosshairs in the middle, which is still fine. Um, but this one, this is the MOA version. It has a floating center dot. I like that a lot. So real quick on that one, but so this is not the configuration it'll stay in. I'll take that off, put probably some type of, uh, I don't know, not necessarily a lighter weight optic, but something that maybe fits what I'm looking for in terms of a hunting package. So, but getting into the results, I believe I've already shown a video covering this stuff. This is a lot of, yeah, a lot of jumbled up mess here, but essentially what I did with this was tested several different bullets using Shooter's World match rifle powder. I'm a huge fan of that powder for 308, for 223, for 65 Grendel, for six millimeter arc. It's, it's essentially accurate 2520. According to an individual that I talked to, it's basically a clone of accurate 2520. And even prior to knowing that, I was a big fan of accurate 2520 because it can get you some really good velocities in 308. It is a ball powder, it's temp sensitive to a point, so you have to keep that in the back of your mind. Uh, if you work up a, a hot load uh, in the winter time, and then you go out in the summer, you're probably gonna run into some pressure issues with it, but it does provide good velocities, uh, and I've always had good luck with it in terms of accuracy and all that. So we'll kind of go back over if you guys will remember, you know, I was just doing some velocity tests with different bullets. So we've got the 165 grain Sierra Game King, uh, 165 grain Sierra Game King. You can see I uh, got up to over 2,800 feet per second there. Uh, that's moving along pretty good. Got the 175 grain. Uh, this is the Barnes match burner. So up over 2,700 feet per second with it. The 168 grain tip TSX, again, same thing, up over 2,700 feet per second. The 150 grain, this was, that, that's not one that I would actually use moving forward. That's the bullet that is designed for 30-30. Uh, so it's got that massive hollow point on the front end. I just had some sitting around, so I just wanted to see what those, you know, how those would perform. And then the 110, uh, the Hornady 110 VMAX. So I actually had to do this kind of backwards because I changed the way I changed the way I did my uh, powder charges. So I actually start here and then work your way up and down, kind of like a horseshoe. Uh, but you can see we finished, you know, just under 3250 there. So that kind of gives you an idea of the velocity potential of that <coughs> of that powder and this cartridge. So digging in to that, and that's been a minute since I shot all that. But I wanted to circle back and I wanted to test out because I am, you know, going to take this gun hunting and I wanted to develop a hunting load. And I've got probably five or 600 more of those Sierra Game Kings sitting on the shelf and wanted to work up a good load with those. So what I decided to do, I went back, looked at my velocity data. We'll focus on that one. Move back to that. So I looked at my velocity data for the Game King, right? And wanted to work within a range where I felt comfortable and, you know, knowing that we're, we're working up this load in the summertime, right now it's 
feels like it's a thousand degrees outside. Humidity's through the roof here in Alabama. That's just standard summer for us. It is what it is. But keeping that in mind, because we we probably would experience some levels of, of pressure if I pushed it too far beyond uh, what I've already tried. So I just wanted to work within you know this range here. So settled on 46.2 up to 47 and testing two tenths of a grain increment. So I'm basically repeating this, but with five shot groups. So that's what I did. And overall, overall length that we test 2.8 and yep you can see the groups here I'm going to show you the uh, the numbers on paper right so you can see one and a half inch 1.3 0 0.653 1.42 0 0.833 and it's a little bit deceiving when you look at it on paper because then when you transition over to the actual target Right, so this is the target. So you can see what I'm talking about, right? I mean, you, you put four real close together and then I had one go high. So I was like, well, shoot, you know, that, that kind of stinks. And moving on to the next one, 46.4, same thing. Shot four, this was actually like shot number two or three. So it wasn't like I put four and then the fifth one out. Now it was that way over here, right? I shot all four of these and then the fifth one went high. This was like the second shot or something like that. So it wasn't one of those, one of those things where, man, four good ones and then the fifth one, you know, is what gets us, so. But then the third group, we put it all together. Uh, shot a really good group there, 0 0.653. And then fourth group, everything just opened up, you know, it opened back up. So I want to stay away from that. And then the fifth group, it kind of started to tighten back up still. Not like these first three where you had them where they were wanting to group. I mean, this was definitely better than this. But, you know, I think for what I'm going to try to do, probably going to stay down here somewhere. Maybe just call it 46.5 uh, right there in, in the middle and then go shoot that, see how that does. See what that looks like in terms of accuracy, velocity. I'll load up several more. Uh, to test both, make sure our velocity is stable and consistent. And of course, it's going to change day to day, depending on environmental conditions. Um, that goes without saying. Hopefully, no one thinks that it won't, because uh, it will. So, so that way, you know, you kind of get a, at least a baseline of understanding. Because if I go ahead and capture that information now, right, load up maybe 10, 20 rounds, something like that, get my average velocity, SD, ex extreme spread with a decent sample size. Then I can come back in the winter time, you know, before, before uh, gun season opens up in November, I can go back to the range, I can shoot it again, make sure that everything's still zeroed, that the velocity probably gonna drop, depending on, you know, just wanting to see how much it drops by and see if that has any impact, the environmental conditions, I'm sure it will, uh, has any impact on the velocity and then point of impact, right? So, so that's gonna be the thing now. Gonna get this brass process. This is Alpha Munitions Brass. Shout out to Quest for the Perfect Load. My buddy Zach, uh, you guys have seen this on the channel before. He actually 3D printed this for me. So, shooting 308, so I'm using my 308 loading block. Um, yeah, Alpha Munitions Brass. This stuff is really good. Now, I was definitely experiencing some pressure uh, up here toward the top end. I mean, I was cratering primers pretty good. Uh, but again, this is something that that uh, I figured I would experience given the warm temperatures and shooting this powder. Knowing that you know, I've got a little bit of history with Accurate 2520 at least. Uh, so knowing that Shooter's World Match Rifle is pretty much identical to that. I knew, you know, up close to 47 grains, probably gonna start running into some pressure pressure issues, especially with the, the temperatures given the heat. So, and we did, uh, but nothing too crazy, nothing that, uh, you know, I would be scared to work up a hunting load, you know, somewhere in this range. And then, because again, when I go and shoot these at its intended target, which is white tailed deer, it's gonna be cold. So I feel comfortable in that range. Um, what else? I 
think that's it. Uh, yeah, Alpha Munitions Brass. It's small rifle primer brass. So I'm using CCI 450 small rifle Magnum primers. Um, I think that's it. You guys have all the information, all the data. So yeah, that's where we're going to leave it. I'm pretty pumped about this uh, and this rifle in general. I'm a huge fan of this CVA Cascade, by the way. I really like how they've put this thing together and it just, it shoots well. Even, I do like the muzzle brake on it. 308 is not a heavy recoiling round, but it's got a little bit of thump to it. So with that muzzle brake, it's nothing. So really nice there, uh, but that's it. We are gonna call it done. So y'all stay tuned. I'm gonna have some more of this uh, content coming, probably some more, um, you know, our workup loads with those other bullets that I had tested previously with Velocity and just kind of see, you know, how they perform accuracy wise with that powder. Cause it's one thing to have decent Velocity, um, you know, improve Velocity numbers in terms of the amount of Velocity you get. But if it's not going to produce accuracy, then you know, is it really worth it, right? If you got to shoot through a ton of stuff just in your load development to get to a halfway decent acceptable uh, load just because you're chasing velocity, is it really worth it, right? In that case, it's not, at least in my opinion, right? Good can be good enough. So especially when you're hunting deer size game, good is good enough. One MOA, one and a half MOA even two MOA, you know, as good as good enough. So that's it. That's where we're going to leave it. Hope you guys enjoyed it. We'll catch y'all next time. Y'all have a good one.